gon' give it to ya Fuck way for you to get it on your own X go deliver to ya What's up nerds, welcome back to Tea Time with your favorite software engineer. If you guys are new to the channel, subscribe. I'm trying to grow this channel to 10 subscribers a day. And I also have a Slack channel where I post leak code problems every day and we discuss and solve them. So that link is in the description below. And now today we're going over to some, um, I did this problem a while ago, but it's when I first started the channel. It's one of the most popular problems on leak code. You definitely need to know this one. It's not challenging at all, but I'm gonna go over um, three different solutions so we're gonna start with the easiest brute force we're just so let's jump right into it given an array of integers nums and an integer target return indices of the two numbers such that they add up to target so there's exactly one solution and we don't uh, use the same element twice and we can return the answer in any order okay easy enough so they give us a target and we just have to return the indices of two numbers so we're going to return 0 and 1 because this is the 0th index and this is the first index and 2 plus 7 equals 9. Simple enough and there's always going to be just one solution. So um, this one is we're trying to get 6 so we return 1 and 2 for these two indices and this is just uh, 0 and 1. 3 and 3 equals 6. So easy enough. So let's go over the brute force, the easiest one first and then we'll optimize it. So simple enough. Um, for brute force we're just going to have a pointer here and since we can't use the same number twice we'll have a pointer at the next element and we'll just use a double for loop and the inner for loop will loop through the uh, I guess you'd call it the outer pointer the right pointer so the left pointer will be here and we'll test this one with the right and then this one and this one all while the left stays here after we test that um, if we didn't find the answer we'll increment this one and the right pointer will be um, I plus one, so it's never the same. So let's go ahead and implement that real quick. So for int i equals zero, and so we want to do nums dot length minus one. Um, we're doing nums dot length minus one because if um, i can't be here, this think of i as the left pointer. We can't have i at the end because the right pointer is going to be at the end when uh, the left pointer is here. So that's the reason for that. And I plus plus for int j equals. So j cannot be the same as i. So we're just doing i plus one. If we did j equals one, they would overlap when we increment i to i to one. So j less than numbers at length. Okay, and then so we just want to see if these two numbers in the array um, equal the target. So if nums of i plus nums of j equals target, then we're just going to return a new int array, and it's going to be i and j because we're returning the indices. And if there is no solution, well, we're I mean, they told us there always is going to be, but this is for the case, like, if we just run this now, I don't think it's going to let us, because we don't have a, yeah, we're missing a return statement. So this is, like, how we fix that. We just throw a new illegal argument exception, and we can just say whatever, because it, it's not going to change the outcome, so I'm just going to write no solution. And there you have it. Let me run this. Sweet. So there you have it for brute force. And now let's try and optimize this. So let's reset this and think about how we can improve it. So um, we had to loop through this array like, uh, with two for loops. So if we could do it with one, we would increase the or decrease the runtime. I'm sorry. So. Um, in order to get, if we loop through here and take each number and subtract it from the target, we get seven. And then if we can take this number and we call it the complement, and we can, we can use, if we use a data structure to see if um, the nums array already, the nums array contains the complement, 
and then we know th that is the solution, those two indices. So a uh, perfect data structure for this is a hash map. So a hash map is, has keys. So we have a, a key. And then we have value. So we, the key maps to the value. So for this problem, we would want to put say, um, two, seven, 11, and 15. And in the value, because we want to return the indices, we'll put the indices as the value. So we would do zero, one, two, and three. So that's what we want to do. Um, so let's go ahead and write out this problem and we'll go along. So we have wires, wires. in a integer equals new hash map okay so the first thing we want to do is we want to fill the hash map so for int i equals it we're just going to loop through it and let's um, so it's mapped output is the function and we're going to do so we want to put the key in the key is the first value in the put function so we want to do nums of i and then we want to put the indus so now we have our, our hash map filled it looks like this so what we want to do is we're going to loop through again And let's calculate the complement first. So equals um, nums of i, or no, it's target minus nums of i. And if the map contains the complement, so it contains key, we're going to look it up by the key of the complement. And we also have to make sure that since we can't use the two, two of the same elements, we have to make sure that um, map dot get uh, complement. I believe it's is not equal i. So let me zoom out. So that's this this statement right here is making sure that we're not using the same indices. So if it does, we're just going to return a new int array with, um, <clears throat> I believe it, map.get, oh, geez, what did I just do? Map.get complement and i. And it looks a little funny. And then again, we just need to um, throw the legal argument so we're returning something in all scenarios, argument, exception. I'm gonna use the same string, no solution. And let's run this. So map.get, return new int, map.get complement. Oh, okay. I was map dot get complement. Okay, there we go. Oh, I have okay. So I was doing the braces wrong. Okay, there we go. So that's the second solution. So this is going to be O of n runtime and O of n space complexity because we're using the uh, hash map. So we sacrificed. Um, space for runtime. So um, we can actually improve this just a little bit more. Um, we can do it in one pass. So I'm just going to reset this. Let's create the hash map. I'm going to zoom in. So this isn't this is this solution is not much different. I just wanted to show you guys. It doesn't improve the runtime. 
or space complexity, but we can do it in one pass instead of um, two. So nums.length. Okay, so the first thing we want to do is calculate the complement. So target minus nums of i. And then we can check to see if the hash map um, contains the complement. I know we haven't even added them yet, but we want to in the in the loop first check um, because we don't want to add it and then check it would uh, we would be adding it. It just wouldn't make sense. So if map dot contains key complement and return, so we're going to return new and same thing. Um, Map dot get comp. Let's make sure I don't mess this one up. <clears throat> and so after after this, um, so obviously on the first run, um, it's not going to contain the complement because we haven't added anything. So that's exactly how we want it. Map dot put nums of i and i. Jeez. And then we just want to throw the new illegal argument exception again. So, um, no solution. So this is the same runtime, same space complexity. It's just shorter code. Um, I see you'd say it's more efficient. And semicolon. And there you have it, there's all three solutions from um, worst to best. So if you guys like this video, smash that like button and I'll see you in the next video. Yeah.